No DRO, no problem. We need to drill and ream a couple of holes and move both on X and Y axis. How are we going to do it? Hey Don, I got those gauge blocks back from certification. That's exactly what we're going to need. Have a seat. We're going to talk about how we're going to do this with gauge blocks. Okay, Glenn. Yeah. By the way, it's good to see you. You have uh, not been around for a while, so yeah. thanks for stopping by. I appreciate Thank that. You. Sure. Let's suppose we have a bridge port and we don't have a DRO. And that a DRO is... A digital readout. Oh. Okay. okay. And you need to drill a hole and ream it for a dowel pin. And you need to drill a second one. And we need to move one inch from the first hole this way and 250 thousandths the other way. Okay. We don't have a DRO. We don't want to really depend on the dials on the bridge port because I'm not so sure that they're as accurate as they could be. I think that the gauge block method would be a lot more accurate. So in this case, we're going to take the one inch gauge block and we're going to take the 250 gauge block and we're going to set it up in such a way we're going to trap the gauge block in two corners like so and then we're going to remove them and move our part up against the stop. Okay. That's how we're going to make our move for 250 and for one inch. Okay. And then it's set up so you can do more if you need yeah, right? and, and I think we should be able to get this thing within a thousandths or so. Yeah. So let's go up back. Let's set it up like I uh, mentioned. We'll show you how we're going to do it. Okay. And let's see if we can make this baby come out the way we want it to. Good. You ready to roll? Oh, yeah. Let's always. head back. So here I'm stoning. We already removed the vise, as you can see, and uh, it's always a good idea to stone it to make sure there's no burst, particularly when you're trying to work with reasonably close tolerances. And I chose a square here, which I happen to know is in excellent condition because I checked it prior to the, doing the video. And a couple of clamps here just to snug down the square. I'm going to take our dial indicator and indicate it in. And as we can see, I, I guessed at it reasonably close, but we got to move it around just a bit. Snug it up. I like to snug it up just a bit more. Each time we get it a little closer, I like to snug it up a little more. And we're within a couple. That's a tenth indicator, by the way, in case you're interested. <clears throat> Now within uh, thousands or so here, we're going to get a little bit closer than that, I think. So, that's pretty good, really. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Well, those of you that don't want to have grease under, under your fingernails at the end of, a, end of the day, it's a good idea to just take a bar of soap and load your fingernails up with, uh, with the soap and and you'd be surprised at the end of the day when you wash your hands, there's no grease in there because there's no place for the grease to go because the soap's in there already. So it's a nice little trick that I use on occasion. Make sure I come home with clean hands. And of course I wipe the, uh, you didn't see that, but I did wipe the residual off my hands so it's not slippery. And uh, I set up the two blocks here, the 250 and the one inch. And we're going to move up against both of them and put in a T-bolt there and set up our bridge and come in here and now remember clamping it down I have to have room for both moves and, and you can see I'm tapping very very lightly I want to make sure that that uh, we don't move the square at the same time and I like to put a little pressure with my hands even though I've tapped it in but we're going to go back in here and double check it and make sure the square didn't move and as you can see, it did not. So I'm pretty comfortable that the square is plenty tight so we can tap on the block without moving it. So we're going to put our first hole in here. We're just double checking to make sure I've got enough room uh, for the X and Y uh, move. Tighten it up there. And I did snug it up real tight, but you know, and then I did tighten the uh, both tables. You just didn't see that. So we're going to crank this up a little bit for the center drill in the 1100 RPM range thereabouts and come in and center drill our first hole. Why a center drill? Because 
the, you're more apt to get the hole accurate in, in placement than you are if you don't use a center drill. A drill will tend to walk a little bit. Center drill will give you a pretty good shot at making sure that you're going to get a good straight hole and you're going to put it in a location. So once you do the center drill, of course, then we're going to go down with our first drill. And I like to use a little cutting oil. And I'm going down here about an inch, although it didn't, didn't look like it, but I did. And here's our next drill, which is the final drill prior to reaming. And that drill leaves about 20 thousandths or so. And uh, again, we're going down about an inch. And here's our reamer. We're going to crank it down, put it in low gear. If you look at the tape rather than the reamer itself, you can see how fast it's going. And uh, I like to blow the chip out. Now there's a, another philosophy that says, well, you should just go down a ream and not take it in and out. Well, I don't happen to believe in that. I think you get a better hole that's straighter if you remove the chip so the chip doesn't rub against the part and cause it to go oversized. So we're gonna wipe everything down real good, make sure that it's clean, no chips, no dirt, no grime. Slide it, remember we always like to slide, slide, slide. We're up against our stop. Put a bridge back up there, tap it in. Again, we're going to go in with our center drill for hole number two. And uh, a little cutting oil. First drill again, same process. And we'll come in again, we're going about an inch, a little, bit, a little more than an inch, but about an inch. That's a blind hole, which causes uh, a little bit of a pressure build up when you're installing the, the, uh, the dowel pin, which is what we're going to do at the end here. And again, this is our second drill. And now we're going to put the reamer in, put it back in low gear. And if you watch the tape there, you can see that uh, now it's sped up here. So it's kind of deceiving as to how fast it's going, but it's going pretty slow here, folks. I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm going to remove it. We we'll take it up and give it to Tim Allen, Tool Time Tim. All right, wipe it down real good, hammering the dowel pins here, as you can see. And uh, we're going to take this baby up front and have Tim check it out. Let's see what it's all about. You'll see a few bubbles here, but don't pay attention to that. That's just the air coming back out. Let's go up front. All right, Tim, do your magic. All right. Let's see what kind of reports you're going to give me using your magic machine. Well, let's see how we did here. We know it's going to be right on the month. Oh, of course. No. It can be no doubt. That's correct. I would never make a serious mistake like that. All right. Let's see. Vertically, two six thirty, one six thirty one. So within a thousand. Within a thousand. That's good. I'll take. I'll give that. you that one. I'll take that one. Okay. Uh, this one's a little tough to get at. I know here. your magic machine is on the money. That reads within a couple of tenths, doesn't it? A couple it? tenths. A couple tenths. That one. There's that one. And we're looking for... 250. Yeah, I got some bad news. Um, we're five ninety seven and eight twenty six. That is not two fifty, my friend. Well, uh, you better check your machine because <laughs> I know I ain't off that far. Six, eight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's the answer? answer? Twenty three thousand. Oh, come on. You got to... You better <clears throat> check your machine, make sure it's calibrated right. No. He's dead nuts, man. Man, how can and, I be off 20 thousandths plus? And, you know, this way measured right on the money. So if that's right on the money and this one's measuring off, then we have to assume that one of those is <clears throat> not right, and I think it might be this one. Well, you, I, I, put, I know I checked the gauge block, the 250 gauge block, which was... I put the right faces in position, so I know I didn't put it in the wrong okay. way. And you, you cleaned it, 
Oh, Stoned course. it, deburred it. No, there wasn't a hunk of goober. No, no chip laying in there. No, no, no. Shoelace. No, no, not my foot. Shoelace, nothing. Part of a peanut butter sandwich. No, that, well, maybe. <laughs> was Glenn helping? <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> well, there, there you, go. you go. Wow, um, how can that be? Twenty. I mean, I can understand one or two thousands, but twenty plus thousands. How can that be? You know, and if you'd been using the crank, I could say, well, you miscounted, but since Didn't you were using the gauge block, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Nope, lock, lock the table down. Um, so this was either, I mean, There's it was either crooked, um, not in the vice correctly. Actually, didn't use the vice, clamped it down. Ah, okay. <sighs> I don't know. Well, let me think about it. We'll go back and uh, see what I, the hell I did. I, I'd like to think about it in my mind and see what I did from beginning to end and how that could possibly be off again. A couple thousands I can understand, but 20-some thousands? Yeah, I mean, that. Uh, it, it, the, the table or the part moved, one of the two. Something moved, yeah. Or, uh, you know, gremlin or uh, well, as proper always, alignment of the planets or yeah. who knows. Well, as always, thanks for the great news. <laughs> yes, well, you know, you, you told me I only ever give you bad news, and Man. there's some more. All right, well, let me give this thing some thought and figure out what the heck we did. All right. Thanks well, for the bad news, man. Sorry, Don. I don't know, man. 20,000s? I mean, go figure it out. I can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. How the heck can Where it be off 20,000s? I don't get it. That is really, really disappointing. I'm I, surprised. I, I can't believe it. I mean, I... How can one dimension be almost right on within a thousandth or two, mm -hmm. and the other one is so far off? I don't understand. I mean, I can understand, you know, if, if I put the gauge block in the wrong way, but uh, obviously I did not because the gauge block is 250 this way, and going this way, it's 344. So that would be off almost a hundred thousands, and we're not looking for hundred thousands. We're looking for twenty thousands. Okay. So where the heck is the twenty thousands? Where did that come from? That we that we made a a mistake by twenty thousands. Didn't I, didn't you drop a part in your pocket hooked on to the? To oh, you know what? Yeah. You, you know what? You're absolutely right. That's correct. My pocket got caught on the handle. Uh, yeah. Of the Y axis. Was it locked down at the time? I locked it down, but you know, I don't. I didn't really lock it down that tight. Right. And I probably should have really put it down nice and uh, tight. So I'll bet you that's exactly what happened. Uh, yeah. That's the only explanation I have for being off twenty thousandths. I mean, the, the gauge box were up against. Remember, I tapped yeah. them in nice and you, tight. Well, you had it all had nice that little and tight. hammer no. and got it nice and tight up against the the stop. So that couldn't have been it. And I know that the the uh, square that we had did not move. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't the issue. Right. So. I, it had to be when, that pocket. when, right, when the pocket got caught on. So the lesson that I've learned here is that loose clothing can be very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, I didn't get caught to the point where I would fell into the machine. But you could. Yeah. What if the spindle were running mm -hmm. and it had a big fly cutter on there, let's say, mm -hmm. and I went to move and on my pocket got caught on the mm -hmm. handle, I fell in the machine. Mm -hmm. That would not be pretty. Not good at all. And my wife would be very angry at me. <laughs> yeah. You've so, been missing some fingers or something. <laughs> body parts are missing body parts are never a good thing. So the takeaway here, the way I see it, is that uh, from a safety standpoint, uh, you certainly need to be very careful with loose clothing, whether it's sleeves or pockets or whatever. And secondly, that uh, if you're running this on a bridge port, you need to make sure that you lock the tables down mm. using this method of not having a DRO. Sure. So, uh, wow, 20,000s. That's really disappointing. You're lucky that wasn't an expensive part. Good point. Had this been, say, a five or $10,000 part <laughs> and we screwed this up, I don't think the boss would be very happy with me. How long do you think they had? A day off? A week I, off? I, you know, I might want to just pack up my toolbox. I don't know. <laughs> it's been nice knowing you. So again, that's the takeaway, folks, uh, is uh, lock the table down and be and be very wary of, of loose clothing and make sure that you don't uh, have loose clothing that can get caught in the machine. And as always, uh, keep an eye on us. We're, uh, watch us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and uh, we're there. You like what you see, give us a thumbs up, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>